everybody! Welcome to Falcon Spotlight Shattered Planet. By the way, saying that out loud, it makes me realize exactly how many games I've covered in a channel that have something to do with planets or worlds. But you know, that's besides the point, alright? I'm over here meandering about things that don't really matter. You're asking what Shattered Planet's all about, and I will tell you what it is. Shattered Planet is indeed a game that got ported over from... I, I guess if you want to be technical about it, the is it the iOS, the Android tablet market, you know, platform, whatever. I don't know, I, I'm really, really way back in technology when it comes to things. I still have like a flip phone, occasionally it wants to chirp at me and things like that. So, as you can imagine, I'm not really too familiar with the whole technological advances in today's society. But I do know that Shadow Planet is a game that was originally, you know, an iOS type of game essentially, and it got ported over to PC. Um, by the time this video goes up, it should be on Steam, and I'll have all the proper links in the description if you do like what you see, you want to check it out for yourself. Um, without, with all that said, let's actually get into the game itself. Now you're probably wondering, um, give me some comparisons here, what the hell is this game about? Well, um, if I was to, I guess, make a bold comparison, I would basically... Oh, here we have a little overlay so you can check it out. Oh, I forgot I've been playing this a little while too, because I actually do enjoy the game quite a bit. As a matter of fact, probably a good thing when you're trying to cover a game, though, that you kind of enjoy it yourself. Uh, let me walk around over here. So you, you walk around with the basic functions, you'll be using pretty much your mouse for the majority of things that you do indeed do. Right now you see my dude just walking around over here. Let me go into this little pod area over here, and this will basically allow you to switch classes. Right now I'm rocking a uh, Renegade level 6. Been working with an Assassin level 8. This is just barely unlocked. It's a robot. We might give that a little test run just so you can see what it, how it works out. But for now, let me go with the Renegade, which I've been working on right now. The game uh, shares similar, I guess, comparisons to, you know, say, Dungeons of Dreadmore or um, Sword of the Stars the Pit, if I could be bold to say. But there's also a little bit of a Rogue Legacy type of feel to it in the sense that, let me see what I have here. I have 24 scrap metal and 22 crystal, huh? Okay, so let's go in here really quickly. This kind of works as your storage system, which basically every time that you die, you quote unquote get cloned again. So essentially, you're you're living constantly, which is where the Rogue Legacy I think comparison comes to me, where it's just like you know, you die, but whatever you do kind of accomplish kind of opens up paths for your future clones to kind of work with. Meaning the storage system over here works in the same way. Let me get out of here really quickly. So let me spend a little bit of cash here so you have a better idea what I'm talking about. So here, for instance, say I come over here, right? And this will cost crystals to actually buy, right? So I could start off this run completely nude. No weapon, no armor. But before you start off a run, you want to get something equipped, right? So let's go with some bronze equipment because I'm kind of low on the crystals over here. This will give me some cyber goggles. And let's see. Do this one and this will give me a new item. By the way, the item system also is really important because the more things you uh, discover, Basically, the point is that you want to discover as much as possible in the game, and when you uncover or discover more things, you get uh, rewards and things to that nature. Right now, we just got the newspaper, which I think, oddly enough, might actually work as a weapon. This gives you plus 12 wits and stay up to date on current events. This is basically just some uh, formality, though. Yeah, the newspaper actually does indeed work as a weapon, so as you can see, there's a lot of like silly weapons here and there. They all have their own their own personal stats and values and everything to that degree. But, you know, there's a little silliness involved into it, which I think I, I really enjoy. It doesn't take itself too seriously, I should say. So let me buy this again and see what I get this time. I got the Droid Disguise. And that's good, because now with the Droid Disguise, you see, we didn't really get it to our inventory, right? It just went back into our actual inventory, our storage inventory. And now this is basically available to any of our future characters, or even this guy if I wanted to equip him with something, but I won't do that right now. I just wanted to give you an idea for it. So let me move out of here really quickly. And this right here would be your vending machine. And with this guy, you could basically sp uh, spend some more crystals to actually have some usable items to take on you with your journey. So let's get a grenade going just for the hell of it. I'm kind of really low here. And let's get this um, molecular vaccination, which basically keeps you from getting poison. And poison is a really goddamn terrible um, status effect you want to avoid. So I'm completely out right now. With the crystals or the scrap metal that I do have is what you will use to level up your dude. So let me just go over here. I don't have enough to any level anything up right now, unfortunately. But basically, strength is basically your damage output. Wits will help you out with your dodging, your defensive capability, essentially. And then health is basically to make you a little bit more of a damage sponge whenever you need it. Uh, this dude is walking around with me over here, by the way. is a little bit of a pet system that works out, which will help you out in battle and take some aggro from you and help you attack enemies. Um... The first one I unlocked was this guy, but I just recently got that little, um, cute little guy that's following me around right now. And basically, these are all, um, capturable, and then basically you could keep cloning them over and over if they survive a r If you die in a run, 
and the animal or the clone still survives with or doesn't die that run, but you do, he'll basically roll over to the next character too, so you don't necessarily have to make them all the time because they will cost you either crystals or scrap metal to recreate them for another run. So for right now, we're actually kind of ready, so I've been talking a lot enough here. Let's actually get in here. The daily challenge is basically what you would expect it to be. A daily challenge is basically, it's, um, the game is procedurally generated, so that much should be pretty much a fact when it comes to, like, a roguelike type of game, as I mentioned. Um, this daily challenge is something that everybody starts off with these items over here. Everybody has the same map. You have to kind of go through it and see how far you can get into. Think of something like Spelunky Daily Challenge. You know, everybody has the same seed. Everybody does the same thing. And, you know, whoever gets farther, it's because of their skill or luck, you know, whatever it might be. But we don't want to do that right now. We're going to go into the Explorer mode to kind of give you a little feel as to what's going on over here. Uh, my expressions of it so far is I've actually enjoyed the game quite a bit. Um... When I checked it out, or when I got it initially, I was a little bit skeptical, thinking that it would be just kind of like, you know, oh, it's just a piece, or it's just a port of a handheld game. It can't be that fun. And oddly enough, I spent a lot of time in this game already. Whenever you start up a thing, the guy will talk to you, right, the little reptilian creature. So, right off the bat over here, as you can see, this will be our main overlay in the game itself. Let me move over here to get some of the scrap metal. Uh, these little red eyes right here, don't be alarmed, they're just actual enemies or possible things of uh, interest in the game. So, it doesn't necessarily tell you, hey, this is an enemy, but uh, keep an eye out because it could be actually an item for you to actually proceed or get, like, you know, a new unlock or something like that. So, for now, we do know there is a beast over here. Let's go over to this guy because um, he should be technically easy enough to fight. Alrighty. And, as you can imagine, this is going to be all turn-based, essentially, right? You know, he takes, they take a move, you take a move. So sometimes you could also wait in the current square that you're at, and I'm gonna do that just so that um, our friend actually fights this dude. So let me just take a wait. As you can see, I took a wait and then they kind of took their own turns right there. My dude is kind of stronger than that guy, so that's understandable, but let me go ahead and fight this dude meanwhile. Now, aside from that, the combat itself also has like, you know, kind of a, a leveling system in a sense. Oh god, we took too much time and this little purple ooze that's over here spawning does indeed spawn these creatures who are uh, quite a bit more stronger than we are. Um, they're essentially here to keep you from farming an area too long, you know. So think of something like, you know, say Magicide, which I've covered, in, I've been covering recently in my channel. Um, it keeps you from just hanging out in one area too long and just um, farming the area for goods. We need to keep going, and we kind of already, as you can see, need a, quite a bit of health. There's our our UI is actually really easy to kind of uh, figure out as well. Over here's going to be our health, the items that we could use. What we have equipped. Really simplistic, really easy, but that's alright. I think that's a good thing to have, you know. This right here is going to be for the crystals that you can farm up. You do have to break it down before you collect the goods and whatnot. But I'm trying to avoid um, this purple dude coming at me, so I'm just going to keep running for now because I'm really not okay with our chances of survival here. The game, <clears throat> the game's difficulty, sorry for losing my voice there. The game's difficulty isn't really that bad. At least early on. Um, it's a lot really based on your decisions. I got stuck in a corner over here. So now I'm a little bit fucked. I'm going to put this to the test right now. I think our dude's going to actually die. But let's actually use some of these items so you can kind of check out how it works out. So I have a grenade, right? I could choose to either just drop it or throw it. Let's actually throw it. Hopefully it'll attack this dude and not our friend. But I'm not entirely sure that's going to be the case. But let's try it out. Yeah, it actually attacked my friend too. Which I'm not really too happy about. But, as you can see, it does leave some fire damage in the area, so this guy will take some fire damage over time. Thankfully for us, it was enough to actually kill him. If I walk through there, I'm gonna get charged myself, though, unfortunately. So, I didn't really think this through too well. There you go, four damage, I'm scorched, yep. I'm not really long for this world, as you can see. Really terrible first impression of a game for a run, but at least at the same time, it does serve to kind of prove to you that the game is, you know, not, it's completely unmerciless, you know, it will screw you over any chance, it's up to you to kind of uh, survive that. I only have one HP, so I really don't see much happening right now. What is the point though? What are you doing here? Well, I am didn't pick that up because I have bigger fish to fry. Here's my point. Let's get to this um, warp. Use teleporter. So once you're able to actually get to the teleporter, it, it'll basically teleport you to the next portion. How it's going to work is I haven't really gotten too far myself in my runs. I think I've made it probably. I got an achievement right there. I got the spawning ground, which I think I probably got for walking around in the little purple ooze there. And by the purple ooze, I'm not talking about like, you know, the secret of the ooze, TMNT2. You know, which is still a good movie, unlike 3. But that's besides the point. Um, I was trying to say as here. Basically, uh, I'm not entirely sure what the end all goal is because I haven't survived too long to actually make it too far. I think I've gotten to like... Maybe the fourth level on a really good run. It is going to be really pertaining to how much uh, the equipment you do, do you do start off with. 
Um, that's why sometimes it's not the worst idea to actually load up on some scrap and crystals. Don't spend them whenever you do have to restart a new run. And save up for a bit so that when you do want to take a serious run, you could probably spend some money on the silver and gold level equipment. And then you could start off the run a little bit better off. Right now we start off with nothing but bronze equipment. We have a fucking newspaper for God's sake. So this will be the end of me right here. There you go. But that's alright because it will at least give us an idea as to what happens. So here lies newbie clone 001 who is flammable as an old Christmas tree. There's a lot of humor in this game too. And I could tweet about this apparently too. Uh, I won't tweet about that because again, technology and myself don't really get along. But again, you'll start back up over here and you'll be like clone 007 or something. whichever, Whatever you want to go with here. I have 42 scrap metal saved up, so let's go over here and level up a bit. I would say some, you know, some health wouldn't be too bad, so those will increase my health a bit. We're up to 110 now, and there you go. And then again, the clone system, I could go back over here, and this takes actually crystals out. So this is actually 15 to get the friendly crab lid. And my little, this guy's a little bit better, significantly better as a matter of fact. It's usually what I go with, but I don't have enough um, crystals to make this happen just yet, so I won't be able to do this by myself. But to give you an idea as to what I meant about storing up um, items, well, say for instance, um, I didn't want to spend anything over here, but I didn't want to go in naked, so I could go into my storage system, take this, this will be equipped, and let's go with, I don't know, let's try the old Warhammer, I suppose that'll work out for us. Everything has different stats, this is a new discovery, by the way. So I, I, I made this, but I never actually equipped. On strike, electrical field attacks with electrical damage wielded by the old mighty code warriors. So, and right now because we actually got a few set number of um, new research items, we actually got um, research level 5 and this will give us the Shatterer, which is a level 5 item, which is, sounds really good as a matter of fact. Alrighty, so we got the Warhammer and this and that. Nope, don't recycle. If there's one thing I can really complain about the game though is that the UI can be sometimes messy, like as you can see, I just want to get to the X, but you know, sometimes this will impede my way to get up there. There you go. And we'll take probably one more run before we call it in a video. Just to give you a better understanding of the run here, because the first one was really terrible to be honest with you, and I feel quite embarrassed about that, so let's just continue onward here. Maybe we'll make some good progress. Um, again, the system itself, even as simplistic as it does seem, it does take uh, into, considera into consideration like uh, damage types. For instance, for those crab dudes, they're actually weak to uh, blunt damage. And as you can pretty much imagine, I'm using a Warhammer, which is, you know, basically blunt damage central, right? It's not a blade. So, you know, take that into consideration as well. So, um, the enemies, when you ever beat one of them up and you check out the research for them or their background, it will tell you whether, you know, hey, they're either successful with a blunt damage, strike damage, uh, elements as well. We, we are using electrical Warhammer right now. I guess we're kind of like Thor Jr. in a sense. But, you know, keep that in mind. And right now we found a teleporter already. However, I think even though it feels like kind of a kind of like a cheap trade-off, I'm gonna do this, which is and you if you have a certain amount of HP, or say you have the healing items to supplement this and you're in a tough spot in a level and you can't make it to the teleporter, you do have the chance of just jumping off. And what this won't do, it won't kill you instantly, but you do have to have the health to survive this. So right now, this requires negative 75, meaning I won't be able to survive this jump. But I will do it just to kind of show you off what happens, and obviously what's going to happen is I'm going to die. But, if I would have had more than 75 health, I would have been able to make it to the next level and not died, and then just kind of heal up and everything like that. So yeah, there you go, I just wanted to show that off. So, this is Shattered Planet. Really simplistic, but oddly really, really fun and addicting. Like, I found myself, you know, just kind of like testing this game out a bit before I made a video for it, and next thing you know, I'm like two hours just kind of running around being like, whoa, where's my time gone? So I'll have all the information in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Definitely give it a look at the very least. It's a really fun game, and unlike its iOS counterpart, it doesn't have any of the, uh, you know, pay to win type of things, you know? Everything is going to be all unlocked for you, or not unlocked, but everything's available to you, you just have to unlock it through progress in the game. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I encourage you to click the thumbs up or a like, whatever YouTube does these days. The support really does mean a lot. And if you liked the game, please go ahead and check it out in the description. Really fun game. Either way, guys, I will catch you next time.